My name is Osama Rakawa from the Graduate School of Fisheries and Environmental Sciences, Nagasaki University. First of all, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Dr. Shunho Beck, Risk Assessment Research Center, Kiosk, and the International Committee of the Sixth Asia Pacific Symposium on Food Safety 2021 for giving me an opportunity to present my study in this wonderful symposium. Here, I will talk about tetrotoxin saxitoxin selectivity in puffer fish. This slide shows some basic information about tetrotoxin, which is referred to as TTX hereafter. TTX is a potent neurotoxin with low molecular weight, whose toxicity or amount as toxin were previously often expressed in mouse units. One mouse unit is defined as the amount of toxin required to cure a 20 gram male mouse within 30 minutes after interperitoneal administration. Minimum lethal dose of TTX to human is estimated to be around 10,000 mouse unit, which is equivalent to about 2 mg of TTX. Main symptoms of TTX poisoning are numbness and paralysis, and this can occur due to respiratory failure. TTX was originally isolated from marine pufferfish of the genus Takifugu as a pufferfish toxin, and named tetrotoxin after the scientific family name of the pufferfish, Tetraodon tidae. The slide shows the toxicity of typical Takifugu pufferfish inhabiting the coastal waters of Japan. Yellow circle in the table indicates non-toxic, which means that the maximum toxicity is less than 10 mouse unit per gram. Similarly, light blue circle indicates weakly toxic. Blue circle, moderately toxic. And dark blue circle, strongly toxic, which means that the maximum toxicity exceeds 1000 mass unit per gram. As you see, toxic parts and the toxicity are different depending on the species. But in general, the ovary, liver, and intestine, and in some species, the skin are highly toxic, whereas the testes and muscles are non-toxic and edible in many species. This slide shows the toxicity of marine pufferfish of the genus Lagocephalus. Some species of this genus are almost non-toxic and consumed in Japan along with Takifugu pufferfish. Upper is Logocephalus spadiceus, almost non-toxic and edible species, and lower is Logocephalus lunaris, highly toxic with TTX and non-edible species. These two species are very similar, and it is quite difficult to distinguish them only from their appearance, although the distribution of dorsal spines are a little bit different between the two species. Logocephalus lunaris usually inhabit warmer waters, but occasionally come up to the coastal waters of Japan, and the coat mixed up with non-toxic Logocephalus spadiceus to cause food poisonings due to mistaken ingestion. This slide is an excerpt of statistics from the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare, 
showing the food poisonings due to marine toxin that occurred in Japan during the 10 years from 2006 to 2015. As you see, the number of incidents, patients and deaths are all predominant in puffer fish poisoning, followed by shigatera, marine slay poisonings due to tetramine, parrot fish or box fish poisoning due to paritoxin like toxin, shellfish poisonings, and marine snail poisoning due to TTX. In Japan, even today, about 30 people per year are poisoned by eating puffer fish, and one of them dies. This table shows the species and parts of puffer fish that are approved for human consumption in Japan by the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare. The green letters indicate puffer fish of the genus Takifugu, which includes species where only mussel is edible, species where the mussel and tethys are edible, and species where the muscle, skin, and testis are edible. Purple letters represent puffer fish of the genus Lagocephalus, and yellow letters represent puffer fish of the genus Phaeroides. The family Diodontidae are porcupine fish, and the family Ostracidae are box fish. Both of which are basically do not have TTX but are treated as puffer fish in this table. As you may know, not only puffer fish but also a wide variety of organisms possess TTX. The slide shows the distribution of TTX in aquatic organisms, although it does not cover all TTX-bearing organisms. In addition to puffer fish, other organisms that have TTX in the sea include gobi, arthropods such as crabs and horseshoe crabs, starfish, mollusks such as octopuses, and marine snails, flatworms, ribbon worms, and on land, amphibians such as newts and frogs. At present, we believe that toxification of puffer fish is exogenous. Namely, puffer fish do not biosynthesize TTX by themselves, but take up and accumulate it from TTX bearing benthic organisms such as flatworms, starfish, and small marine snails. These prey organisms contain large amounts of TTX that was originally produced by marine bacteria and bioaccumulated through the food chain. So, non-toxic puffer fish can be produced by culturing with non-toxic diets under the environment where the invasion of TTX building organisms is completely prevented. Land culture shown in this slide is one of such culture styles in which seawater is slowly filtered in before pouring into the tank to prevent toxic organisms from entering into the tank. It is sure that a TT, TTX in puffer fish comes from the food chain, but the transfer, accumulation, and elimination profiles of TTX taken up into the puffer fish body via the food organisms remain to be elucidated. To clarify this point, 
we have conducted various TTX administration experiments using the non-toxic cultured puffer fish. The slide shows the toxin administration method we have used. Initially, we fed the test fish with TTX containing diet, but this method is not suitable for short-term tracking of toxin kin kinetics because it is difficult to accurately administer a large amount of toxin at one time. Therefore, we next conducted intramuscular administration in feed. The toxin solution is injected into the dorsal muscle or oral garbage administration in which a tube is inserted from the mouth into the intestine and TTX containing feed homogenate is squeezed into the intestine. This slide shows examples of the results obtained in the TTX administration experiment. The vertical axis in the graph indicates the toxin content of each tissue and horizontal axis indicate the rearing period after toxin administration. In the upper left panel, the dark blue line indicates the change in toxin content of the digestive tract. The yellow earth color line indicates that of the liver and light green line indicates that of the skin. As you see, by 24 hours after toxin administration, the toxin content in the digestive tract decreased rapidly and the toxin content of the liver increased accordingly. After that, the toxin content in the liver gradually decreased and the toxin content in the skin increased instead. Therefore, the TTX administered into the digestive tract by oral garbage was considered to first transfer to the liver and then to the skin a little later, probably via the blood circulation. In the lower right panel, the intra intramuscularly administered TTX was remarkably transferred and accumulated in the ovary, but not at all in the testis. Namely, it was clearly indicated that the toxin transfer to the gonads greatly differ between males and females. Let me change the story a little here. The slide shows the structure of sachs toxins. Sachs toxins comprise a group of neurotoxins involved in the toxification of bivalves and more than 50 components, including sachs toxins, goniotoxins, C toxins, and many other derivatives have been separated from various marine or freshwater organisms. You may be more familiar with the naming paralytic shellfish toxins, PSTs, or paralytic shellfish poison, PSP, but here, I will call it toxins or STX. <clears throat> the yellow letters in the table indicate the component we found in freshwater pufferfish Calvamoy N methyl derivative of STX or GTX. This slide shows distribution of STX in aquatic organisms. STX were originally produced by dinoflagellate in marine environment and cyanobacteria in freshwater environment and accumulated in plankton feeders such as bivalves and ascidians. 
which occasionally cause human food poisonings. However, not only bivalves and ascidians, but also many other organisms such as a part of marine pufferfish, freshwater pufferfish, toxic crabs, and horseshoe crabs could accumulate STX. In the 1990s, I visited Thailand for several months and investigated the toxicity of Thai freshwater pufferfish, Pau Leulas and Pau Swati, whose scientific name at that time was Tetraodon Leulas and Tetraodon Swati. The table shows the toxicity of each tissue of these pufferfish. In marine pufferfish, toxicity of the viscera, particularly the liver, is often highest, but as you see, in freshwater pufferfish, toxicity of the skin was the highest, followed by the ovary. The muscles was also toxic in this species. HPLC FLD analysis reveals that the toxic principle of these pufferfish is not TTX but STX, which is mainly composed of STX, decalvomoyl STX, and neo STX. This slide shows the toxin profile of the marine pufferfish of the genus Arosuan, reported by Sato et al. They were all collected in the waters around the Philippines and found to contain large amounts of STX in addition to TTX. The vertical axis of the graph indicates the ratio of STX in the total toxicity. L, I, M, and S represent the liver, intestine, muscle, and skin, respectively. The ratio of STX varies depending on the species and tissue, but except for Arosuro maniliensis and Arosuro nigropanctotus, STX were the major component rather than TTX, and there were many cases where the ratio of STX exceeded 80%. This slide shows the toxin profile of the marine pufferfish, Cantigaster Valentini. This is a bit off topic, but it is said that the non-toxic black saddle fillet fish mimics this pufferfish to escape attack from a predatory fish. This strongly suggests that the pufferfish toxin functions as a bio biological defensive substance. Recently, we investigate the toxin profile of this pufferfish species and found that it contains about 15 to 25 percent of STX in addition to the main component, TTX. Most of the toxin was localized in the skin, which was presumed to repel the predatory fish. This slide summarizes the distribution of TTX and STX in the pufferfish of the family Tetrodontidae. As I already said, marine pufferfish of the genera Logocephalus and Takifugu mainly possess TTX, whereas freshwater pufferfish of the genera Leodon and Pao have only STX. Marine pufferfish of the genera Cantigaster and Arosuron have both TTX and STX, although the toxin ratio varies depending on the genus or species. I didn't mention, 
but puffer fish of the genus Spheroides and Cheronodon may possess both TTX and STX, while black shoe water puffer fish of the genus uh, Dichotomic Tele have only TTX. Thus, the toxin profile of puffer fish varies depending on genus or species. Why does this happen? It was unclear whether it simply reflects the toxin profile of prey organisms in the puffer fish's habitat, or whether it is related to genetic factors namely the inherent TTX or STX selectivity in the puffer fish. Therefore, we first compare the toxin selectivity between marine puffer fish of the genus Takifugu and freshwater puffer fish of the genus Pao by in vivo toxin administration experiment using non-toxic cultured individuals, which I mentioned earlier. The result is shown in this slide. The left graph shows the result for Takifugu paludaris, the marine species, and the right graph for the Pau Subati, the freshwater species. The vertical axis indicates the toxin amount in each tissue relative to, relative to the administered amount of toxin. As you see, in Takifugu, TTX administered into the intestine by oral garbage was absor absorbed into the body and transferred and retained mainly in the skin and liver, while decalvamoyl STX was hardly retained, retained in the body, although it partly remained in the intestine. In strong contrast, in Pao, little TTX remained in the body, whereas STX was absorbed into the body and transferred and retained the ovary and skin. The findings clearly reveal that Takifugu paridaris, which naturally contains TTX, selectively accumulate TTX and Pao Subati, which naturally contains STX, selectively accumulates STX. In other words, the toxin profile of puffer fish is presumed to depend more strongly on the inherent toxin selectivity of puffer fish than the prevalence of TTX or STX in prey organisms. Thus, the in vivo toxin administration experiment showed that the puffer fish has toxin selectivity at the individual level. So next, we examine whether each tissue of the puffer fish selectively takes up TTX or STX by in vitro tissue slice incubation experiment using the apparatus shown in the photo, in which each tissue slice was incubated with special incubation buffer containing TTX and STX, and the toxin amount taken up into the tissue slice was quantified. This slide shows a selective toxin uptake into tissues of puffer fish. The upper panel indicates the findings reported by Nagashima et al for marine puffer fish. The white bar in represent the amount of TTX taken up into the liver tissue slices, and the gray bars represent that of STX. As you see, both TTX and STX were hardly taken up in box fish and porcupine fish, whereas only TTX 
was remarkably taken up in marine puffer fish. <coughs> the lower panel indicates our unpublished data on freshwater puffer fish. The orange bars represent amount of STX taken up into the tissue slices, and light blue bars represent that of TTX. As you see, in both intestine and liver tissue, intestine and liver tissues, the uptake of STX was much higher than that of TTX. <clears throat> Thus, marine and freshwater pufferfish have completely opposite TTX-STX selectivity, not, not only at the individual level, but also at the tissue level, although the molecular mechanisms involved remain to be clarified. In marine pufferfish, pufferfish Saxitoxin and tetrotoxin binding protein, PSTBP, which was isolated from the plasma of Takifugu paludaris by Yotsu Yamashita et al., is presumed to be involved in the absorption, transportation, and accumulation of TTX. On the other hand, a putative origin of the molecular evolution of PSTBP PSTBT, toributyrutin binding protein, TBTBP, is suggested to be involved in STX accumulation in freshwater puffer fish. This slide shows gene analysis and toxin profile of Cambodian freshwater puffer fish. The lower left panel indicates the toxin concentration in each tissue of PAO species A and PAO species B for each individual. As you see, in PAO species A, the saxitoxin concentration in each tissue was extremely high, which is far ex exceeding the regulatory limit for STX set by the Codex Committee, that is 0.8 mg STX dihydrochloride equivalent per kilogram. Whereas in PAO species B, only the skin contained uh, somewhat high STX concentrations. The upper right panel shows the molecular phylog phylogenetic tree of TBTBP type 2 gene in the nuclear genome. The difference in the STX accumulation ab ability between the power species A and power species B with different TBT-BP2 sequences suggest that TBT-BP2 is involved in STX accumulation in freshwater puffer fish. Currently, we speculate that PSTBP is involved in TTX selective toxin accumulation in barine takihugu puffer fish, while TBTBP is involved in STX selective toxin accumulation in power freshwater puffer fish. In future studies, we will gather enough data on the toxin profiles as well as the distribution of PSTBP and TBT-BP ice forms and their expression kinetics in a wide variety of marine and freshwater puffer fish. Comparison and analysis of these data will contribute to discovery of the molecular mechanisms of TTX and STX accumulation and the evolutionary process by which puffer fish acquire TTX and STX selectivity. Thank you for your attention.